Well, good afternoon, guys, and uh, my presentation is on MAC address tracking, and I'm Vivek Barapu. Well, first of all, do any of you know what your MAC addresses are, or do you know where to find them? <laughs> well, do you know what, what they're for? No. Okay, let's go. Well, MAC address stands for Media Access Control. It's basically like 12 characters made up of numerals and alphabets. So each, each, pay, each device has its own MAC address, its own unique one. So no, no two devices have the same MAC address. And it's usually, um, it's usually installed in the network adapter. So wherever you get your Wi-Fi or Ethernet from, that's where your MAC address is stored at. And uh, like it says, it's media access control and a number that identifies the network adapter installed on your device. And it's made up of six pairs of characters. Like you see A, 0, B, 1. So it could be just numerals or alphabets. And it does not change. And the difference between a MAC address and an IP address is like the MAC address is assigned when, it's, when the manufacturer uh, manufacturers the device, so it could be like Dell making their computer, they assign the MAC address to it before it's shipped. And like it says, it stays the same. And an IP address is assigned by your um, internet provider, and it can dynamically change. Like either you could change it, or most of the time the IP, like the internet provider, changes it by themselves, so they don't even tell you when they change it. So. So, it does, so it's unique, but it can change. And uh, here's, a, uh, here's a good comparison, I, like an illustration I found on the internet of the difference between a MAC address and an IP address. So your IP address is like your uh, address for your post box. And if anybody wants to send you a letter, they got to know your address. So that's your IP address basically so let's so here the letters like like the internet you got to have an IP address to get it and the MAC address is like your physical mailbox it's like the color the size and shape so basically the physical characteristics and uh, and just only thing is that your mail mail mailman or as it says postal carrier so in this case that's a network router as long as it can identify it, uh, you'll get your mail. And so it's unique to you. And, uh, it, and you can change it by getting a new mailbox so, or getting a new computer or device. It still uses the same internet. So your IP stays the same, but you can, you can get a different MAC address. And uh, like it says, it does not affect your delivery. So this is how a Wi-Fi connection works. Whenever your device is not connected to a Wi-Fi, it's, um, it's always sending out a signal looking for Wi-Fi. And in the signal, it sends out your MAC address. So when it sends out your MAC address, it's looking for any signal that recognizes your MAC address. And if a router recognizes it, it will just connect and it accepts the invitation. And uh, hopefully it connects to the internet. And, and your MAC address is like, like a key. Like, they basically pair up, and that's how you connect. And so this is how the government can track you using your MAC address. So since your MAC address is unique, it's just like a fingerprint. And if you do anything illegal on your devices, let's say, let's say you break into some servers or anything, the, the law enforcement can track it back to your MAC address. And uh, using your MAC address, they'll like get to know, they might get to know your location, I think. And uh, use, if they get your location, they could easily get your identity. And it'll lead them back to the perpetrator. So you guys don't commit any crimes on your devices.
And uh, retail stores have took advantage of the MAC address thing. Like, your MAC addresses weren't designed to be used like that, but they've made, uh, they've made, they've took advantage of it. So as you know, some stores have their own Wi-Fi hotspots, and you think that they just put that for the convenience of the customer so they can get internet access, but they have their own reasons. And uh, like some stores, they hire third-party retail analytic companies, and they use those Wi-Fi hotspots to, like, to identify every MAC address that it, ident like, it recognizes. So, so if you go to a store and, it, uh, and your phone sends out a signal, you, it sends out your MAC address, so they would know that that customer was here before because the MAC address was recognized before. And so they basically could track you, and many stores have multiple, multiple hotspots, so they would know like which physical, where you are physically located at, which, which router or hotspot has the strongest signal on you. And so, so basically they're just looking for the MAC addresses. And since every MAC address is unique, and every device has its own, so basically every MAC address could be every customer. And here is some of the customer inf examples of customer information that was gathered. The average wait time at the back register is two minutes, so there could have been a hotspot at the back register, and uh, it just sees how many, how long does was the MAC address at that place. And so using that, they could identify how long the back register took. Half of your customers have been in your store twice in a week. So that's pretty easy. It just recognizes your MAC address was in the store twice in the week. 10% of the people who came in your store never came near a register, meaning they don't buy anything. So basically, they never went, their MAC address was never recognized near a register. So they didn't buy anything. There are a lot of people not finding what they want. So basically that means like they've just been running around the store. Basically all the hotspots caught them. And they, they never went near a register, so they didn't buy anything either. And uh, here's this hotspot in your store that draws the most users. So basically the hotspot that recognized the most MAC addresses or connected the most, that should be your, high, like, your most busy hotspot. The typical user comes in and purchases one thing. Maybe the user just went to one part of the store and then went directly to the register. And 10% of your stores have been at more than one of your store, I mean 10% of your users have been at more than one of your stores. So a person could have been at a McDonald's in Americas, and uh, he could have been to the McDonald's in Columbus too. So his MAC address was recognized at both those places. And so it's not the stores that do all this. It's the retail like analytic companies. So basically, the stores pay them. And uh, the analytics companies, they store it on their servers. So they basically keep track of the whole of all the stores that um, employ. And uh, here's the privacy concerns that they come with. Like there, there are benefits to the customer with this, but like the stores haven't made it so that the customers could make use of it. They've just took pretty much all the advantage of it. They haven't given the user like a reason to want it. So there are benefits, but so far only the retail stores have used it. And the MAC address, like, uh, they would just, the stores would just know your MAC address. They wouldn't know your personal information, but if they wanted to, it's easy to cross-reference the information with public or commercial data. There's ways where they could um, look for your, whichever router rec recognize your MAC address, so they could see that this MAC address connected to this IP address, and they could track it back to your like physical home address. And if they find that, they could just get your personal information like your name, address, 
phone number and whatnot. So, so thus exposing link, exposing linking personal information with the customer's MAC address. So, there's there's a couple of ways to avoid this. Those retail companies that do it, they they give you um, they give you permission like you could give them your MAC address and have it placed on uh, a do not track list. But it's up to them if they want to do it. You, <laughs> there's no law that says they have to place your MAC address on it. So you, you, you can just be hopeful that they do, but you can never know. Or the easiest thing is you just turn off your Wi-Fi, but I don't think anybody does that since it's just so easy to just go home and connect to Wi-Fi. So, unless you want to be really, unless you don't want to be tracked, just turn off your Wi-Fi whenever you leave home. Do any of you have any uh, suggestions of what else they could do? Okay. So, hey, I'm tracking you. You don't know that I'm tracking you because <laughs> I put this nice little piece of candy on top, which is a off <laughs> um, some sort of. Uh, but there's a lot of stores up there in the Rob's. I never do that. Do you have any, like. You, you download this app on your phone, and when you get close to one of the stores that is used through the third party software, they will uh, say, okay, you're close to the store, you get X amount of points, so you get a, a, a oh. certain percentage off. Just walk through my door right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good lure. That's a good way to lure customers. I bet you can just spoof the MAC address whenever you go out. Do you, can you spoof your MAC address every, every time you go out? No, I don't. I never does it. Yeah. I guess there's an app you can use that you just click it and Yeah, speaking of which, there was this guy that um, spoofed his MAC address, and he he basically hacked into MIT servers, and he committed wire fraud and just stole a bunch of money. So he was um, he he was sentenced to I think 35 years in prison and fined a million dollars, but he committed suicide, so <laughs> you didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> What'd you say? No, um, I just know they, they found him somehow. But wow. His Aaron something, I can't remember his last name. But it was just last year, I think. Yeah, January of 2013. And so there's some companies that have been working on it. And, uh, and Apple's iOS 8 that's coming out in fall, it basically randomizes their MAC addresses. So every time it scans for Wi-Fi, it sends out a different MAC address. So th this could be a good way, but like it has a universal MAC address, but it broadcasts a random address every time it scans for Wi-Fi. Like it could be a good um, a good thing, but there's questions that it raises, like um, would your own home router recognize this? Would it recognize the different MAC addresses? Is there some way that they make so that whenever your GPS locates you at your home, it sends out a certain MAC address? But, but since it comes out in fall, we don't know how they're going to implement that. But that's just one of the ways that companies have come up with. And uh, basically, it could be a good, uh, good thing, but you never know. And <laughs> so if you guys like iPhones, you guys can look forward to random MAC addresses. Can't you set it to where when you go into your home and you're close to your computer, you can have it to where it automatically connects Wi-Fi to your PC? Yeah, yeah. Is there some way that the, instead of the PC or the router identifying the MAC address of your iPhone, instead of store the phone and set when you go to the <laughs> storage or something, MAC address of your PC? Well, basically, how many home routers have MAC address built in your turn on Those people are even connected. Yeah. 
So maybe different companies will come up with their own strategies. Since Apple comes up with theirs, maybe some other companies follow and, and come up with their own suggestions or their own strategies. And, uh, and that's it, guys. Do you have what any? Is, what is bad if someone is tracking your MAC address? I mean, I'm, except that they know that you, you were in this store and you have spent a certain amount of time at the register, what, why does it bother us? Well, some people like their privacy. And it's, it's the same as they make a picture when you just um, traversing around the store and they just can take a picture of you and then can just compare you with some pictures in the database. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's not a concern. So recording MAC address and be able to track your MAC address does not give them any privilege to access your personal data to associate this MAC address with your name and mail address because it's way different types of information storage. How, how can anybody know the, my, my, my real address or my name off of my MAC address? They have to maintain some database and, or they have to purchase the database. So existence of those databases, that's a very bad thing. Yeah, but the third parties. Do you know anything about Probably, yes. If yeah. they, I mean, maybe with a very limited amount of people, maybe if they, if they ask you, like George said, if you download certain application, who knows what this application can do with my phone? At least they probably... How many of us check the permissions that application requires? One of these permissions yeah. can be just... Access whatever access my emails. So I think many people just don't care about as long as this is 10% off for. <laughs> <laughs> but now, whenever you do download an app like that, and you, you say, okay, you know, yes, select all the, the, uh, the permissions. So it says, okay, well, this app needs access to the, the, your GPS. Is there a way that they could somehow use the MAC address with the GPS? They could go, where is this MAC address at now? Yes, as long as it, it asks you for the permission, that's actually the only protection operating system can introduce. A user is warned. If user doesn't care about what may happen, who else can help the user? Well, that's when we start complaining about Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way around it. Yep. You guys have any questions?